Hello, good morning, and welcome to the Ladies on Aqua Television, where we keep you updated with some of the happenings on the front page of the Nigerian newspaper. Please do well to join us on Facebook, drop your comment, your views as they are always welcome on the show. I am Selela Shadashon. I'm doing this program alongside Joyce Jakada. Good morning. Good morning, Selela. It feels good to be here. Thank you. Same here. I'm happy to have you here. Yeah. All right, we shall run through the papers, starting with the Punch newspaper. All right, on the Punch newspaper, we begin with the screaming headline, which is on 70,000 minimum wage. Federal government begins payment. Salaries rise to 4 trillion naira. Federal workers to earn 334.9 billion monthly. NLC, TUC, Loud, FG. And we also have why my administration suspended Sanusi. This is coming from former President Goodluck Ibili Jonathan. And you would recall that sometimes in 2014, um, Mohamedou Sanusi, the then CBN governor, actually made a claim that during the administration of President Goodluck Ibili Jonathan, Nigeria lost 49.9 billion naira and uh, just um, 49.9 billion um, dollars. And just on Thursday during a book launch in Abuja, um, the former president was actually present at that book launch and he, 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 he made the uh, uh, claim about um, reason why the former CBN governor was actually suspended. It was an indefinite um, suspension to allow for investigation because the committee was actually uh, set up. You know, that particular revelation made a generated a lot of criticism, I mean, about the country losing such amount of money. But because the tenor of the CBN governor was almost elapsing and, and according to former President Gulag Billy Jonathan, it didn't allow for him to return. So that was the reason they had to suspend him so that it would allow for I investigation. But the president actually said his administration during his administration, Nigeria did not lose that amount of money. Mm -hmm. So let's move to the next story which says oil companies owe government over $6 billion. This is coming from Nati. And details of that story is on page 49. And of course, all of these um, uh, money is they are, they are all taxes and even royalties that are mm. supposed to be remitted but it's been old. We, we, we hope that they find a way to get this money remitted. Again, coming from the defense headquarters, uh, Federal government probing bandits uh, sponsors. Sele, this is not the first time we're hearing about probes, especially of, sp of sponsors. It True. is long overdue. Mm. Beyond probing, let's see persecution because We've, we've had a lot of issues, revelation, counter-revelation about how that there are people sitting somewhere and sponsoring terrorism. We've had individuals come out to say that if insecurity continues in a country for over 24 hours, it means certain individuals in the government are actually responsible. But unless that these people are dealt with, we keep having these issues re uh, reoccurring. So I, I hope that beyond this probing at the mm -hmm. end of the day we'll see the law taking its course regardless of who is actually true, involved true. in this whole thing and uh, about Edo election uh, Oshomele congratulates Okpebolo once Obaseki probe and details of that story can be found on page 43 of the Punch newspaper. We have Bob Risky reps commence probe prison controllers suspended details of that story is on page 60 Quara Hill's death sentence for five offer bank robbers. And details of that story is, from, is on page four and five. Seller recalled in April 2018, there was a bank robbery in offer Quara State where about five banks were actually robbed. And that led to the death of about 30 persons, including a police officer, which was uh, everywhere on the papers True. and uh, across the country. People were sad. This did not happen in the night broad daylight and these people like just escaped but recall that the then governor of Kwara State actually made a, a, an offer of five million naira if to anyone can ever. give information mm. and all of that and then this case was actually taken to the court though it, it it was elongated and the court had a lot of reasons why this case took about six years owing to COVID-19 amongst other issues but we're grateful that the case have been concluded even though um, uh, the team of um, the plaintiff are saying oh we're going to appeal all of this but then a lot of people are healing this uh, sentence but more than this I, I hope that this is going to serve as deterrent to others that want to tour that path but if we continue on, on this line of elongating cases of course people will just think they can do some of these things and get
get yes, away with it. So we hope that immediate judgment will be passed on some of these cases and it's going to serve as deterrent to others that might want to tour that same part. Now moving to the next story, a Fanny Fair demands restructuring as Senate OK Southwest Development Commission. Details of that story is on page 55 and the picture story there is on 21 children killed in Kenya school fire buried. Details is on page 29 and that's this on, a, on a sad note. Pictures are already showing emotional moments. Parents are crying and all of that but we hope that their souls rest in peace and that's all on the Punch newspaper. All right, moving on to the voice of liberty, Nigeria at 64, Tinibu orders low-key Independence Day celebration. More data found in the paper. On Kanu State, we have court reject APC bid to hold council election. Federal government proposes Namasa MPA to collect fees and charges in Naira. And the screaming story on the front page is saying renewed Kaduna Restoration Group proposes 25 constitutional amendments for strengthening democracy. Calls for more comprehensive electoral reform deepened yesterday as the renewed Kaduna Restoration Group, RKRG, unveiled detailed recommendation aimed at amendment alteration to the 1999 Constitution to strengthen Nigerians' good governance and democracy. Seen on the Voice of Liberty, ExoMobile proposes $10 billion investment in Nigeria's deep water oil and they made this known during the UN General Assembly 7-9 in New York. The well trade more detail of that story. In Zamfara State, Bandit Kimpi signing Black Kachari Makure killed. And we have $35 million by Yelsa Refineries Probe. Lagos Legate Akindele Sean EFCC invite travels abroad. And concerning the cabinet reshuffle, 11 ministers may lose their jobs. This is coming from a source where we can see that Bajabia Amida may be replaced with Fashada. And I think this is commendable looking at the fact that it's already a year ever since we had these ministers and the cabinet. And I think it's very important that the presidency take its time to actually evaluate each of these ministries mm -hmm. and be sure that the ministers that are heading this ministry have been doing what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We have certain ministries that nothing is happening there and you wonder what is happening. Mm -hmm. Take for instance one of the ministries when we're talking about climate and then looking at the various issues that have happened concerning climate change in the country. You really tell that this is a ministry that you'd have been expecting more from. Or are we going to be looking at the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs for now as far as I'm concerned? That mm -hmm. ministry is on suspension. Mm -hmm. Or there might be speculation that they might scrap that you know ministry because mm -hmm. like times like this during the flood, we are expecting that this ministry should have been up and about. Mm -hmm. But because of mismanagement of funds and many other things that happen in that ministry, we're seeing that, I mean, things are on the hold for now. So I am hoping that the president, regardless of lobbying, regardless of whatever godfather reason is happening there, the right thing should be done. Because, I mean, it's really expected that when you put people in position, mm -hmm. they should own up to the responsibility being given to them and do the right thing. But mm -hmm. we've seen over the years, certain ministries are just dumb and nothing is happening. So mm -hmm. our fingers are crossed. We hope that the president will do the right thing. Whoever needs to be sacked should be sacked. Mm -hmm. If there's a need for a shock, let us see that happening eventually because I believe that Nigerians are looking up to mm. the presidency hoping that they do the right thing. I totally agree with you, Sally. I mean, democracy is about the people and if we are practicing democracy, then we should see people that are being appointed into strategic offices or ministry doing the work, uh, especially as uh, will benefit the people rather than self. It's unfortunate that we live in a time where competence is actually swept under the carpet, but that's quite unfortunate. I mean, monitoring and evaluation is key for any for success and actually progress mm -hmm. so it is actually needful and i think it's due that these uh, um, checks are being done and uh, if people need to be reshuffled they should be reshuffled if people need to be removed from offices because of incompetence they should be removed because i mean nigerians cannot keep suffering they cannot keep going through pains because of somebody's incompetence mm -hmm. so more than ever before i think we should prioritize competence we should look at people who have the heart to serve the people. We, you, you just mentioned an example of this flood. We, 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 this is a time that we, we want to see ministries and then individuals being up and about.
about especially to alleviate this suffering that Nigerians are actually going through. So I hope that at the end of the day, after this reshufflement, we will not see a mediocrity or mm. nepotism being exalted, but we'll see individuals who have the heart for the people being assigned for those that are doing well, continue with their work, and for those that are not doing well, give way for people that have the heart for the people. Of course, all right, and that's all on the voice of liberty. All right, moving now to the Nigeria Tribune. We have the first story on the front page which says oil gas industries owes FG six billion dollar, sixty six billion naira, and that's coming from Nati. Uh, the writer says EFCC orders transfer of one billion naira recovered funds into Federation accounts. Senate moves to end nine billion dollar losses lost to illegal mining. And the next story there says uh, is on Bob Risky. FG suspends senior prison officers and details of that story is on page 25. So you recall of course that as we speak right now the, the social media is abuse with the story of Bob Risky, the cross dresser um, Idris um, it was due to the um, an audio which was released by a social media activist. Um, some will call him content creator or a blogger mm -hmm. that uh, probably known as um, very dark man. And uh, he actually released this o audio that uh, showed how that uh, um, the cross dresser Bob Risky was talking about how he had to bribe EFCC 15 million naira so that he can waive his money laundering case. Um, and, and that was sometimes in April where he was charged to court for um, abusing the naira by spraying. Al already we know there is a law against that. But then uh, the, this recent revelation showed that uh, uh, it was alleged that he bribed the EFCC with 15 million naira. And I mean, this is an anti graft uh, agency that should be fighting mm -hmm. corruption. And the allegation is saying that he bribed them. And beyond the EFCC will also saw a revelation of millions going being bribed to some prison officials among other agencies. And this just calls for concern, even though it's at allegation stage. But this, like the headline is saying, we've seen that some senior officers of the prison correctional service have been suspended and this is to allow for investigation. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bob Risky have since come out to, to say, deny the claim, saying that was not him. That was not him. Uh, it was so just some formation. But I think these can actually be uh, taken to court. And at the end of the day, we just hope that at the end of the, the whole um, investigation, we'll not be seeing cover-ups, but we'll be seeing the truth being unraveled. It's just quite unfortunate that uh, in, a, in a time where we, you see people uh, uh, talk about corruption and how it has eaten deep into our fabrics and affected the growth and development of this nation, we are hearing cases against that coming out especially against though it has not been proven but mm. we will cross our hands and wait for the outcome of that investigation but as we speak now some senior officers have actually been suspended and still on the nigerian tribune we have all your records 130 suspended cases of cholera in six lgas details is on page four beyond uh, or your, we also have UB and other states that mm -hmm. have recorded these cases. But we hope that at the end of this success will be achieved, especially in combating this rate of migration affecting health sector. That's according to Obasanjo, the former president. <laughs> is lamenting that details of that story is on page 25 and where you have a system that does not look out for the well-being of its uh, um, workers of course at the end of the day you see them falling for juicy um, um, offers. offers like of that so we hope that nigeria as a country will look into the welfare of its worker mm. workers and improve that people have made a lot of jokes about the economy going high cost of goods and commodities on the high side but with the stagnated income like it was only the income that was crawling but everything has actually skyrocketed so we hope that we do the need needful we, we have a lot of our, our workers especially from the health sectors doing well outside the countries where you even have top government officials or politicians moving to other countries and being treated by the same people so why can't we have them in this country and have people mm -hmm. from other countries come which will also add up to even our GDP in the country but unfortunately because of negligence and then lack of appreciation or motivation we have our health workers going out there it calls for concern indeed just like the former president lament details of that story is on page 25 tenebu reappoints chinoko cmd dg details of that story is on page four of the nigerian tribune do well to check that and then the bold headline says what southwest development commission will achieve 
that's according to senators. The rider says that Senate passes bill awaits reps concurrence. Details is on page 23. If you want to know what the Southwest Development Commission will achieve, check page 30, 23 of the Nigerian Tribune. We also have FG to toll Lagos Ibadan Expressway, second Niger Bridge orders. Details of that story is on page 4. Edo, INEC presents certificates of return to Ope Polo, deputy. I will be servant to my people, governor elect uh, says. And details of that story is on page 8. Court sentences five to death by hanging six years after offer bank robbery. Details is on page 27. And that's all on the Nigerian Tribune. Right, let's take a look at Blueprint newspaper where we have the Chief Justice of Nigeria to inaugurate 87 son as Supreme Court Max Legal Year. You read detail on page 10. On business, we have NDIC pays 84.98% of depositors in liquidated Heritage Bank. Still on the paper concerning the 64 independence anniversary, we have seen Renew Hope Agenda long-term solution to our challenges. The writer here say unveils gains of tenable government or just citizens' resilience. Reforms will transform nation into economic superpower coming from Idris. Data found in the paper. As well on the 79 UNGA, where we have ExxonMobil on this $10 billion deep water investment in Nigeria. Ten years after Sanusi sack, Jonathan opens up on missing $49.8 billion fund. Ten years after Sanusi sack, Jonathan opens up on missing $49.8 billion fund. You can do well trade detail in the paper with the writer C. I bear no grudges against the ex president coming from Amia Sanusi. We're looking at as well as S Bank finalized acquisition of um, blank BAC. You read detail in the paper. Troops neutralize 65 terrorist commandants. And we also have five of our bank robbers, gang members to die by hanging. You do well to grab the paper in more detail of any other story that is of interest to you. All right, moving to the leadership Friday. We have five to die by hanging for offer bank robbery. Details is on page 10. Court rejects APC's prayer to stop Kano LG election. And we also have trending FG probes bribery allegation in prisons. We also have 65% of insecurity under control. And that's coming from the minister. Do well to check the leadership Friday. Nera slides to 1,685 1, per dollar and 1,705 per dollar in Lagos, Abuja. Details is on page 15 of the Friday leadership. We also have the screaming headline that says ahead of October 1st, Tinobu's ministers struggle to defend reforms. Ryder says say they will make Nigeria economic superpower blame past missteps for hardship. President orders low-key independence celebration. And the details is on page four. I, I, I really don't know when we'll move past this era of blame games. I mean, when there's an issue at hand, you, you always look out for solution rather than pointing figures. Like I'll always say, the point of responsibility uh, or the point of change is you taking responsibility. Mm. Because you're in office, you do the needful. But today, what we see is that allies keep coming out to defend, to, to point fingers. I know we can't talk about the future without making reference to the past. But how long will we dwell on the past? We're in the present. So why can't we forge ahead? Mm. So well, ahead of uh, October October 1st, which is uh, Nigeria's Independence Day, um, we're hearing blaming past mis missteps for had their current hardship. And then the president is ordering low-key independence celebration. There's no other time than now than to do low-key celebration. But why should we get to this point where we have to celebrate low-key? Independence is freedom. And imagine life without freedom. So let's do the needful to correct our, our wrongs so that we can have good celebration. Now we also have Nigeria secure 600 um dollar amid aid for flood and flood relief and then orders and that's coming for unga and then there's also um nda is isaiah niger government tax youth on moral values details is on page seven and more than ever before 
I think moral values should be preached because uh, what is there, a lot of people are already touring the wrong path, especially the young people, because some will tell you, oh, we've been deceived. We've been told that we are leaders of tomorrow. We've grown to become adults, and yet we still see the same people holding the key. But more than ever before, I think we should still keep our heads high and then uphold our moral values and not being distracted. And that's all on the leadership um, newspaper. All right, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper and starting with the big story where we have Tinubu's foreign missions. How Nigerians' internal crisis narrow foreign policy international repute. And I love the picture here where we can see Tinubu's many troubles, where we can see the economy, we can see crime, we can see world crisis, we can see poverty, corruption, inflation, power as well as insecurity these are all the troubles that the president is currently going through so you can do well trade more detail concerning that in the paper experts one of looming crisis as four trillion naira yearly wage bill spark debt fears detail on page six october 1st federal government orders low-key anniversary side national hardship Reps push for independent candidacy ahead of 2027 poll. Jonathan debunks disappearance of $49.8 billion during his tenure. Ohani Zifli, Southeast Governors over Kanu's continued detention. Court sentences offer bank robbery vict um, convicts to death by hanging. Stolen Crook, IOC. Indebtedness to federal government hit seven billion dollar data fund on page three. Reps decry NNPC, Dongote price secrecy wants marketers to leave well from refinery. You can do well trade more detail on page six, and that's all on the Guardian newspaper. All right, moving on to the Vanguard newspaper, we have why some heritage bank depositors are yet to be refunded, coming from NDIC boards. Details of that is on page 19. On Edo Pool, I'll be servants of all ready to work with opposition. That's coming from Okpe Polo after receiving certificates of return. Details is on page 7. Beyond the say, we hope to see him doing this. And we also have these day publishers to military. Stop arresting protesters go after kidnappers gagging media will stagnate democracy governor oye banji details is on page 10 i mean it's quite unfortunate you can't talk about democracy without press freedom and when we have situations where um, press men are being arrested I, I mean it's just so unfortunate you want to start thinking whether we are in a time of uh, um, like uh, we are not in democracy mm. because if we have democracy then part of the characteristics is freedom of speech and if pr uh, press men are going to be gagged then you where's the place of democracy so i pray that and i hope that the needful is going to be done nigeria assist for SGF ministers defend Tinubu's policies amid cabinet reshuffle hints. Details is on page nine, and the screaming headline says alleged missing forty nine point eight billion dollar. Why Sanusi had to go as CBN governor? That's coming from Jonathan. Says allegation against his government cooked up. Note audits reports commission to probe allegation cleared his government. Insists he didn't cut away with with any amount of money from government coffers. You constructively dismiss me as CBN governor. That's Sanusi replies Jonathan. At I don't have any grudge against you. Details of that story is on page five. And we've seen the, the picture story here. Tinubu received Okpebolo Idahosa. And we hope that um, the, the, at the end of the day, we'll see, um, just like um, the governor-elect said, he'll be a servant to the people and he's going to work even with the opposition. We'll see that put to play. We also have on flood how five northern states lost 141 lives in two months. That's sad. Details is on page eight. Still on Bobriski, FG suspend prisons officers. You can find details on page six. Christian elders to FG, reverse fuel price hike to avert looming crisis. Details of that story is on page 8. Conflict managers will tell you that they are not prophet of doom. But when, when you have a situation where people are left hungry, I mean, you, you they are left with no choice than mm -hmm. to feed. 
any way that they can. I mean, as we speak right now, the rate of criminality is on the high. We are not giving an excuse for anyone's failure or for um, doing the wrong thing, but the government must do the needful. I mean, transportation, people can barely feed. We've seen a lot of memes about how that uh, people, the urgent 2K, now you don't even have the transport to go out there and get the urgent 2K, or it will cost you about 3,000 3, to get, to get 2K. urgent 2K. So it's quite unfortunate, mm. I mean. Government is about the people, and uh, we, we keep hearing the government telling the people be patient. It's already over a year right now, Sele. Some have died. We are now in an era where it's strange to have people eat three square meal. In most houses, they cook once, and uh, you hear stories of children as, as little as age of five sleeping with hunger because their parents cannot afford to buy mm. food. I mean, Prices of food did not just skyrocket it by 100%, in some cases over 300%. And that's the thing with other commodities and even services. So just like the Christian elders are calling on the attention of the federal government on that, especially as regards the fuel hike, mm -hmm. we hope something actually uh, is done about that. Because the president during his inauguration talked about the need to actually remove the subsidy. Not just him, even other candidates spoke about that. But what was the explanation given to that so that there will the, the other sectors of the economy will feel the impact rather than just putting subsidy in one sector it's going to be removed education health and other road in everything is going to be accessible but going with the removal what has gone down can we all say that now education is accessible and affordable can we say health care is affordable and accessible all of these things like transportation can we say it's now affordable we go in by the removal of the, of the uh, first subsidy instead what we have is hike so we, we hope that the president and the government will hear the plea of the mm -hmm. Christian elders. People have alleged that even his cabinet, that, oh, this is a hearing government, uh, the hearing president. We hope that he's going to hear and do the needful, especially as regards the plight of Nigerians. And I, uh, on sports, that's on page 39 of the Vanga newspaper. We have a Govon continuous as Super Eagles head coach against Libya. That's coming from uh, NFF. You can find details on page 39. And think that will be all on the Vanguard newspaper. Right. Before we continue further with the paper review, let's just take a time. I'll let you go through the papers, chew it, and when we come back, we will continue on the paper review. Please stay tuned with us. Make your everyday informative, make your everyday count. Know your world, daily affairs, national and international with authentic news events as they unfold on Global News and Zuma Nigeria, Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. Welcome back, it's still the ladies. We have been looking at a number of stories going back in time to the of our robbery in Quara State where we're saying that the culprits will actually be, you know, um, hanged to death. That is the judgment that was given. As well as we are seeing the accusation on the former Syrian governor talking about Amy Sanisi, where he's saying he holds no grudges against the former president Jonathan. We have quite a uh, number of other stories on the front page of the paper, which we will love you to please go through them, drop your comment and your views on Facebook. I see you have Joyce Jakada with me. Thank you so much, Joyce. My pleasure, Sede. All right. We will be looking at the Daily Times newspaper, starting with the big story, where we have $49.8 billion didn't lease under my watch, Jonathan replies Amy Sanusi. The writer say, explain why Kanu Emia was suspended as CBN governor. I was constructively dismissed by the ex-president, says Sanusi. Data of this can be found on page 4. Over 65 terrorist leaders, commanders killed in three months coming from the defense headquarters. You can read detail in the paper. 
Federal government suspends senior prison officers over infraction. You can find out on page 15, still concerning the case of Brobiski. Allowing independent marketers to leave well from Dungbote refinery reps urge the federal government. And on Ember Mode, FRSC unveiled new master plan to reduce road crashes. And I think this is really, really timely. Joyce, at a time like this, we know that we're almost getting to that period of time where people will be traveling mm. from one part of the country to another. And we've recorded quite a number of road crashes, mm -hmm. on the road mm -hmm. auto crashes. Mm -hmm. And it really breaks my heart. In as much as we know that some of it is basically, or most of the crashes we have is as a result of human negligence where we have people who are supposed to do what they should do they mm. do not do it we have issues of cars we have issues of drivers driving roughly and the roads as well so i think it's really timely where we have the federal road safety coming up at a time like this to bring up a new master plan to actually reduce the road you know crashes that we have so we look forward to people adhering and listening and doing mm. beyond just <laughs> you know reading all of these things, we hope to see them making uh, measures that will make sure that whoever is, you know, found doing what is not supposed to be done will actually face the full rot of the law. So we look forward to that and we hope that everybody will listen mm. to this um, instruction coming from the Federal Road Safety. So like additionally, uh, additionally, I also hope we have governments that actually look into the plight of the people. I saw a very disturbing picture and then videos on Facebook of a traveler that was heading to Yola. So like they got to a point where they had to just park because the road mm. crashed. I mean, no car can pass. There were bikes, bikes parked, cars, trailers, trucks parked there. People were literally stranded and partly it's because of the raining season. And I, I was just thinking, while they were standing there waiting, there was maintenance going on and then the, the government was they were trying to fix the road. And I was thinking to myself, don't we monitor some of these roads? Don't we see the possibility? Are there no reports about the looming mm. dangers? Why do we have to wait until travelers are stranded before we start fixing the road? So we have the ability to fix it. Why wait until this? Mm. So you see, th this is these are part of the reactive measures that we always see being put to bear. Like we get news we get informations about some of these things coming up even this issue of floods there were reports but this is not just an attitude you see only on the government or government officials even the people people are being warned about maybe buildings around uh, um, riverside or even uh, clearing drainages but people don't do that until it happens before we start clearing it so it was really disturbing seeing that some people are missed this insecurity like they had they would have to sleep like at that point because they, there was mm -hmm. no way they would cross. So mm -hmm. cars were just talking that way. I do hope we get to a time where what we always see is proactive measures rather than being reactive because some of these things at the end of the day cost the lives of people. Sure. It is only when accidents begin to happen then we start thinking of fixing roads. It is only when people are stranded then we begin to fix roads. Like, let it not be our attitude. Mm -hmm. It's really uncalled for. Let's see proactive measures. Let's see care and love for not just the nation, but for the people. And that you see in leaders that are patriotic. Very true. We look forward to seeing our government playing their part concerning this. Still on the Daily Times newspaper, we have oil, gas, industry, owes federal government, $6 billion, $66 billion naira. This is coming from Nemo. This is a report from Netsi. Downside of the paper, NDIT commences sale of heritage bank assets to compensate uninsured depositors. You can find detail on page 9. We have this picture story. You can do well to grab the paper with more detail of any other story that's of interest to you. Well, moving to the nation newspaper, we have under 18 pupils wouldn't sit for worse. Coming from Minister in SIS, that's Minister of Education, to hear a mom and seller. You will recall that this um, revelation generated a lot of argument mm -hmm. and even criticism. But we, we saw how that the likes of us to commend such a uh, um, policy or such law. And the minister came out to even defend that this is not an act that is just implemented, that, that was implemented mm -hmm. uh, during President Bola Metunubu. It's something that has been in place since mm -hmm. as far back as 1993, the 6334 Act. Like, it's something that w 
we just don't follow up with what it has actually been there. We, we are in a time where parents just want to rush their children through school. I mean, at 100 level, you're seeing a 14-year-old child that can barely, in most cases, they, they struggle to even read and write. So you are wondering, why, why the rush? Why the hurry? Students end up graduating without even productive skills. And that is why organizations today struggle to even employ people. It, it, we talk about unemployment. A lot of people are unemployed. But are they employable? Do they have productivity skills? Can they actually put in effort? Most organizations, even after employment, they have to take time to train people. Why? Because they not like they, they did not go to school. I mean, some of these people have beautiful results. So I don't know why parents are in a hurry to rush their children. A child will go, like, will, will finish primary school before the age of 10, and then he's already in, uh, at, at secondary school. When he gets to the secondary school, after GS1, you rush him to GS3. At, at SS1, you rush him to, like, right to go and write Wyatt. Passing center, you pay certain people to write the exam for the child because you want your child to be in the universities. And today, what professors, well, what lecturers suffer is this kind of student that can barely write. They get to the universities and they are stuck there. You go to colleges of education and then people that are expecting that they will turn out to be uh, a person that will be equipping others, they can barely read or write. So for me, I think this is timely and it's good that the federal government is actually insisting on that. So if your child is going to graduate at the age of 14 or 15, it means that you should engage him in learning a skill so that by the end of the day, when he will get to the 18 years that he'll be ripe to write the was, I mean, at that time he has already added, there's and additional skills. No and the, the Minister of Education went further to explain that this, this policy, the 6334, is to help the child, not just to learn in theory. There are some skills, practical skills, that if the government to follow up to in terms of curriculum, they adhere and they implement. The child will not finish school with just knowing how to read and write. But at the end of the day, you are going to be empowered with certain skills. So I do hope that parents will understand that and they will also cooperate. But once this is implemented and is followed up, that you don't have a choice as a parent. So the advice is for you to just ensure that if your child, you allow your child to follow through these stages. There are, there are reasons why I, I had the opportunity to teach in a primary school and tell I tell you that once your child child cross primary one and he does not know how to read, you leave the child struggling throughout. Because nobody teaches the child how to read in, in, in the university or in a secondary school. You're not taught how to read. There are stages and there are reasons why these things are being put in place. So why not adhere to it and also help the child so that the child will not go out of school and then he's just confused about life, does not have productivity skills and is just roaming around. So I hope that we adhere to that and we support this policy. Still on prison controllers, suspension, uh, all against the probe. We also have Senate passes Southwest Development Commission bill. Details is on page three. Jonathan refutes Emir Sanusi claim on missing $49.8 billion. Details is on page 3. And the screaming headline here says, Federal government cautioning effects of reform, says ministers. The riders, 20 million Nigerians get cash support. Petrol subsidy removal has opened sector to investment. For me, I, I, I don't see the sense in, in sharing cash. Mm. And I ask you, Celia, have you received any cash from the federal government? Or probably you're not feeling the impact of this hardship. I, I bet that the response is actually no. Each time we hear arguments about people being given cash and all that, and I ask myself, what importance is this cash? Because you give a family 10, 30,000, 20,000 after the money, after spending the money, what next? So why not invest into sectors? Why not make transportation affordable? Why not make education affordable? Why not make health accessible? Instead of giving cash, mm -hmm. sharing measures of rice, maggi, and all of that, when it finishes, what, what next? next? So I do hope that beyond all of these argument, counter argument, the needful is going to be done, that every Nigeria is going to benefit from the dividends of democracy. We also have military destroys 897 illegal refining sites in third quarter. CJN to swear in 87 as sons. Details is on page 3. Why marketers can't purchase petrol from Dangote Refinery? You can check the nation's newspaper, page 4, for details of that story. On Edo election, Tinubu, Edo will get full support. Okpe Polo visit Villa. And we also have ex-governor Yayabelu not afraid of facing trial. This is coming from media officers. And details is on page two. For these and more of these stories, you can check the nation newspaper. Sell it over to you. Right on the Sun newspaper, reps urge NNPCL to allow independent marketers 
lift rail from Dengote refinery. Oil and gas sector owes federal government over six billion dollar and sixty six billion naira. Still on the paper, Jonathan Sanusi renew fight over controversial forty nine point five billion dollar. Such amount of money can't miss an economy will remain afloat coming from the ex president. Eighty four percent depositors of the fraud heritage bank settle and DIC saying that Oti Dada right raises stake in FNN talking about First Bank of Nigeria holding with additional sixteen billion naira share purchase. Concerning hardship, federal government disburses 24.7 billion naira to over 991,261 households. Heads road in prison still concerning the issue of Brobiski, and that's all in Daily Sun newspaper. All right, moving to the first news um, newspaper, we have Okpebolo to Edo people. I'll be servant to all. I think this story has been making headline almost all the papers. We hope to see that in action. We also have cholera outbreak claims 10 lives in Eboin village. That's quite unfortunate. We hope that the Ministry of Health and uh, Commission for Health or, or the, the government will do the needful to avert more death. We also have FG to toll major roads nationwide promises safer faster travel coming from umahi we also have fg defense ssce age restriction accuses parents of rushing on their age students senate approves 288 billion naira supplementary budget for fct also fg imports maize wheat to combat flood shortage says finance minister and the screaming headline bob risky under fire national assembly launches investigation into bribery allegations amid prison scandal the rider says government takes action prisons officials suspended as investigation deepens dramatic revelation very dark man claims to have more damning evidence we also have justice served five sentenced to death for brutal offer bank robbery after six year legal battle and the last story on the first newspaper, Tinubu orders low-key 64th independence anniversary celebration. And that's coming from the SGF. That's all on the first newspaper. Over to you, Seve. Right. And that's how far we can go on the program that day it is. Thank you, Joyce, for doing this. Always a me. pleasure. Right. And thank you to our viewers and to every other person on the crew that make this program a success. We look forward again to the next week. Do have a blessed weekend ahead. Bye. <laughs>